How to Mill Perfect Chamfers. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate two different ways of milling chamfers, and I'm going to show you tooling and setup, how to do other types of chamfers as well. The disclaimer. Our first demonstration is this larger chamfer. We want to do this 45 degree here. This 45 degree is larger than what our cutter size here is. It is possible to do it in two steps, but we want to do it in one step. So our options for our 45 cutters is kind of out the window because we don't have one that's particularly large enough. If you had one that was large enough, then it wouldn't be a problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it into the vise on 45 to make this angle 45. We could also tilt the head of the mill to 45 degrees. This here is a 45 degree parallel and it's unseated. The problem with it being unseated is there's no repeatability. We have two of these to make, so with no repeatability, I could have it up here or I could have it up here, and I have to readjust my Z height every single time. And we're gonna go through the Z calculations in a moment. So this is a seated 45. So when I put this in the vise and squish it in the vise, it's repeatable. Let's start off with this 0.375 dimension first. It actually means that the distance over and up is 0.375. So to machine this particular block, we're going to turn it onto a 45 degree and machine from the point down. We need to find out what that calculation is. For this formula, we are going to use geometric principle number eight, bisecting an isosceles triangle. We have two known factors. The hypotenuse is 0.375 and the angle is 45 degrees. So on our calculator, we're going to hit the sign button, 45 equals, and it's going to come up at 707, times 0.375, which is going to come out at around 265. Therefore, when we set our block on 45 degrees and touch off on the top point, we machine down 265 thou. Let's take a look at some layout options. We're going to lay out our 45. Uh, most of the time you can do it with the vernier, but you really shouldn't. So we're going to do a little demo. This side here is done with bluing. This side here is done with magic marker. And I know I'm not supposed to say magic marker. I'm supposed to say Sharpie. One of my uh, followers said, Ray, this is, you should really be saying Sharpie instead of magic marker. So that one's for you. And then this side, which I don't need laid out, I'm going to lay out just to show the difference between having a contrasting material in behind and having metal on metal. So before we get going and start with this here, what we're gonna talk about is the actual tip, okay? Because sometimes the tips here, they're carbide and they do break. So if we take a look here, the bottom of this piece looks like this, it's a knife blade, but sometimes from slamming this in an improper use, it chips. So therefore, this here might not actually be the zero height, so you need to inspect the actual tip to make sure that you are on zero. Okay, so I inspected this tip already, and it is good. Okay, so we wanna talk about setting the height gauge to zero. I know this is very basic, but what happens, keep in mind, we're dealing with apprentices. So what happens is some guys turn around, they slam this down, and by slamming this down, they're physically lifting this off of the plate and then they'll hit zero and then they'll wonder why their layout numbers are not correct. So you wanna be very gentle when you set it down, then you hit your zero, you can double check your numbers to make sure it's zero again, then you lift up. In our case, when we lay this guy out, we are going to be laying this one out at 375. So we go up to 375. We don't really need to lock this in place. We can go to 375 and we can lock it in place, but we don't really need to. So in this case, we'll go here, scratch across gently. And if you need to go deeper, you can go twice. That's not a problem. See, nice contrasting line, flip it down, do the same thing, you can go twice. I'm gonna flip it over and do the other side, although it doesn't need it. I'll do it twice, and then we'll do this side as well here. Now, if we take a look, you might have some camera tricks where it's really easy to see, but when I'm looking at it from this angle, I can barely see it, depending if there's light shining on it or not. But if you take a look here, there's a clear definition. This is the magic marker, and this one here is the layout blue, or layout die. So now we're gonna bring this over. We have two options. 
we can turn around and machine down to our lines, but we're also going to use our math that we figured out earlier, which was 265. So we're gonna drop the, t or raise the table up 265 thou. Before we do this, because we're machining, we wanna make sure that we're all the way to the top. So we're gonna lock our quill in. So we're all the way to the top, we're locked in. I also have my neutral tool here, which you'll see in other videos. So now this guy's locked into neutral and it won't pop out. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set my zero just by swinging my cutter backwards. So I'm going to lift this guy up until I get some friction. There we go. So I'm going to set my table height here. Set this guy to zero, unscrew this guy. And my line is here. Move this guy over to there, to zero. So now I can crank this handle up 265 thou, and I should be at the proper height. So we'll move this guy over. Everything is tight. Our guards here, to lock down in place. Remove our neutral tool. Let this guy go into low. Now, if you notice, I'm cutting this way, okay? You always want to cut towards the solid. So I'm cutting up against this face, which is pushed up against the 45. You don't want to go the other direction because first of all, the chips will be coming at you and it'll also be pushing this way, which is not a solid surface. Now if we take a look, we're right on our line. And if we take a look at the dial, we're at 265. And this is a repeatable measurement. I could put the next block in, go to the same number, the next block, etc. Okay, let's take a look at a demonstration using the edge of a 45 degree face mill. What I'm going to do is something a little bit different than I did last time. Last time we had this set at 45 and came down, while well, this time what we're going to do is we're going to come from the back side in. This isn't in yet, but I'm going to put it up against the stop and then I'm going to machine here, flip this over, machine here, flip it around, machine here, flip it over again, machine here, then do the ends, machine here, machine here, and then these ends. So I'm gonna do all eight sides in one setup for the two blocks each. Then I'll set it up and do the other one this way and machine here, flip it over, machine here, flip it over, machine here, flip it around and machine here. And then we'll have all 12 edges on a 45. I'm going to make this larger. It requires about a 30 thou chamfer on the end. I'm going to put a 50 thou chamfer because we're grinding 10 thou off of each side. So I'm going to put my block in. Tighten this guy down. In this particular case, these angles are not very accurate. They don't have to be accurate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin my cutter backwards as I feed in. I'll go over. Now see I'm hitting. I'm not slamming up against. Now I'm actually moving the machine back this way away from the cutter until I clear. I'm clear, not touching, not touching. So now I'm going to zero this out. Okay, I'm going to move in 50 thou. We can zero that out if we want or we can leave it there. Put this back into low. Now, for this particular cutter, and I know you shouldn't climb mill on a conventional machine, but if I go forward and come back, I will have a nicer finish on my last part climb mill. Okay. So. Okay. 
Now I could also use the power feed on this as well because it's in the x-axis. So a little bit nicer finish using the power feed. And rinse and repeat till you have all of the edges completed. Here's an example of angled parallels. Here is a good example of angled parallels that are seated. In my opinion, they're vastly superior to non-seated. This is a seated adjustable angle. You can set it to any angle you want, but it is not as accurate as the solid machined ones are. If you're after accuracy, you want to use a sign bar. This beveled protractor is accurate to within five minutes. When you're setting up, it's only as accurate as the person doing it. So someone with more experience can be a lot more accurate than a person who's new to machining. Angled cutters work great. They're fast, but they just don't have any adjustability. You can also use multiple techniques to make compound angles or chamfers. It's kind of By tilting the head and indicating it with a sign plate, you can make incredibly accurate angles. There are also compound vices. Don't forget that we can also angle the vise to create different angles as well. Hopefully you found this enjoyable and educational. If I missed anything, please share with us in the comment section. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and thank you for watching. Have a great night.